name is August Scarpelli. I'm here on behalf of Western Reserve Playhouse, and I will be reading a piece from Henrik Ibsen's Peer Gint. Oh, ah, you are tough, you ancient churl. But that's all in vain, for you'll soon be down. I see well enough you've a chainmail shirt, but I'll hew it through were it never so stout. I. Ay, you're shaking your twisted arm. You've reason enough for your spite and rage, but nonetheless, you must bend the knee. Lies. Tis an old tree and nothing more. Lies. It was never a steel-clad churl. It's only a fir tree with fissured bark. It is... It is heavy labor, this hewing timber. But the devil and all, when you hew and dream too, I'll have done with it all. With this dwelling in mist and broad awake, dreaming your senses away, you are an outlaw, lad. You're banned to the woods, I, an outlaw. You've no mother now to spread your table and bring you food. If you'd eat, my lad, you must help yourself. Fetch your rations raw from the wooden stream, split your own fur roots and light your own fire. Bustle around and, and arrange and prepare things? Would you clothe yourself warmly? You must stalk your deer. Would you found you a house? You must quarry the stones. Would you build up its walls? You must fell the logs and shoulder them to the building place. Brave shall the building be. Tower and vein shall rise from the roof tree high and fair. And then I will carve for the knob on the gavel and a mermaid shaped like a fish from the navel. Brass shall there be on the vein and the door locks. Glass, glass I must see and get hold of too. Strangers passing shall ask amazed what that is glittering on the hillside. Devil's own lies. There they come again, you're an outlaw lad. A bark that's toveled is shelter enough, both in rain and frost. Now. He stands wavering, there only a kick, and he topples and measures his length on the ground. The, the thick, swarming undergrowth shudders around him. There's someone after me. I, are you that sort, old Hegstad churl? Would you play me false? A lad. One only. He seems afraid. He peers all around him. What's that? He hides neath his jacket. A sickle? He stops and looks around. Now he lays his hand on a fence rail flat. What's this now? Why does he lean like that? Ugh. Ugh. Why, he's chopped his finger off. A whole finger. He bleeds like an ox. Now he takes his heels with his fist in a clout. What a devil of a lad. An unmendable finger, right off, and with no one compelling him to do it. Ho! Oh. Now, I remember, it's only thus you can escape from having to serve the king. That's it. They wanted to send him soldiering, and of course, the lad didn't want to go. But to chop off, to sever for good and all, I think of it. Wish it done. Will it to Booth, but do it? No, that's past my understanding. Thank you very much. We are WRP.